Dublin, Dublin, Dublin. All roads lead to Dublin and to Park Crook. And for many, the journeys started as far back as 10, 15, and perhaps even 20 years ago. Keep at it, son. Perhaps these boys look forward to seeing their names in headlines. Headlines which not only tell of the prowess of the two oars, ring and record, but set the stage for the long-awaited and widely discussed All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship Final 1956, Wexford versus Cork. On the morning of the 23rd of September, crowds poured into Dublin in their tens of thousands. O'Connell Street was never so crowded as on that Sunday afternoon. Get your colours, colours of the match. For the Irish everywhere, this was the day of days. This crowd of 500 came from New York and earned themselves the title, The Flight of the Gales. Many before leaving their homes checked the wireless so that the old folk who could not travel might enjoy the broadcast commentary of the game. No food shortage here. 125, time for the miners. Kilkenny in search of their fifth title and Tipperary, the holders and already nine times champions. The lads from Tipperary were quickly into their stride and O'Grady, Doyle and Flynn gave them a five point lead before Buckley opened the Kilkenny tally with this point from a 21 yard free. The play quickly swung to the far end again and Doyle, Ryan, O'Grady, Scott, Moroni and Flynn dazzled the crowd and the Kilkenny defence in the process of extending their lead. Kilkenny had bundles of energy but overdid the fancy stuff and so played into the hands of the faster, quicker striking boys from Munster. In the best traditions of minor hurling, the play was fast and crisp. Tipperary attacked and attacked. And although the hopes of the black and amber were raised in the second half when Malloy slammed in a goal, Tipperary were not upset and stretched their 17 points into the lead to 20 before referee Carlo Lachlan called it a day and left Tipperary winners for the fourth time in five years by four goals, 16 points, to one goal and five points. Me father, Godonik Uchtaron Herden. And soon we were entertained by these Irish dancers. And their bonfire dance reminded us that the big question had still to be settled. Where would the bonfires be tonight? You still eating? Seconds to go, radio's on, everyone present, then bring on the band and the teams. Wexford are led by Jim English, followed by Nick Rackard, Kyo, Ryan Dixon, and the boys of Wexford. While Tony O'Shaughnessy, Daly, Ring, and Phil Pot are in the forefront for the Rebel County. The Archbishop of Cashel, Most Reverend Dr. Kinnan, is escorted onto the field by GAA President Seamus McFarlane. The captains and referee are presented to him, and 83,000 people stand for Auron Naville. The team starts level, seconds later, and the game is on. Corks sweep away, and Ring sends them into attack. But within 30 seconds of the start, Tim Flood got the first Wexford point, and soon the Slaney men were back for more. The Cork rear guard put up a stone wall, the fence, but a slip, Pajkyo was in, and crashed home a goal. Four points lead in three minutes. There was no sign of a rout here, and Christy Ring from a 21-yard free opened Cork's account. The hurling was vigorous, brilliant, and above all, sporting. Bobby Rackard beats Christy Ring and sends the Wexford men attacking again. Ball comes into the Cork goal mouth, but Cashman clears right off the goal line. Martin Regan at the other end avails of an opportunity and sends over another Cork point. And again, it's Cork attacking. 
But this one was saved by Mick Morrissey, who made one of his several solo runs across the field to clear for the Wexford man. Vintumi clears for Cork. And Goulding sends the Cork man attacking again. 1-4-0-2. And Wexford still putting on the pressure. Bill Pott chases the ball. Goes after it again. Fuhi chases his man, and both himself and Ryan go down, but Fuhi gets in his shot. And again, it's Wexford attacking, and another Wexford point. We meet the Loch Gorman and Gimmert Kohunta, and we have to say, and we have Tim Flood added yet another point, and Tom Dixon made it 1-6 to 0-2. But Cork were battling back, Ring pointed, and then Eamon Goulding, and again Ring, made it 1-6 to 05 at half time. The game restarted at the same strenuous pace, and Wexford appeared to be breaking down their opponent's resistance. Reichardt soon stretched Wexford's lead to five points, while his brother Bobby was doing well in the Wexford rear guard. He passes into Kyo. Kyo is hampered but gets his kick in, which, however, went wide. Then Martin Codd soloed through for a beautiful point to put Wexford seven points ahead. But no one believed that this was the end for Cork. Bill Pott chased every ball. So did Goulding, Dowling, Fuhi and Daly. And the midfield exchanges were keen and close. Bill Pott chases it again. And soon the inevitable turn came. A close in 21 yards free. Who else but Christy Ring? He lifts his strikes and it's in the net. Cork are on the way back. And before we could draw our breaths, he had calmly palmed the ball over the bar for another Cork point to leave only three points between the two teams. Wexford 1-9, Cork 1-6. Hodge Kyo came back to get another point for Wexford. But hardly was this done than Paddy Barry burst his way through for a Cork goal to put the teams on level terms and set all Ireland alight with excitement. The maestro Christy Ring came back in a moment and put over another point to put Cork in the lead for the first and only time. But Nicky Rackard, again, scored a brilliant point for Wexford to level the scoring once again. Two more points, half past four. Two minutes to go. Ryan passes it into Rackard. Up he goes, palms the ball, goes round his man, and there it is. The goal to settle the match. And as the final whistle blows on one of the greatest, if not the greatest, final of all time, all the 30 hurlers in this wonder game have certainly proved that is Pinya Glor Mokhamon Fain now Gotna Nayon is Kjolnamod Snipinya Fuimer Bih Wingrain now Pokro Sayon Erlikroidor.